just a, a quick short video um, to bring things up to date. It's been a bit frantic over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're in and out of hospital every other w or every week for um, treatment for my partner, and it's kind of throwing me all over the shop because I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Uh, Emma Ritson from the channel Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop is running her toolmakers competition again. It's got a few t um, quirks to it this year. And for those of you that uh, have gone through my back catalogue of videos, you'll found this was my entry last year, which was a cast iron standard, which I made up and scraped so that I could uh, scrape the dovetail ways on the, me on the shaper head. Um, so that was last year's entrant. It didn't win, but I enjoyed doing it. There's a um, set of rules up, so I'll put a link into Emma's link uh, for the channel and the competition entry. But the, the main criteria this year is that uh, the item made has to come from one piece of stock material, uh, plus fixings. So making anything which is uh, complicated, like uh, continuing on with my gear cutting, ain't gonna cut the mustard. Uh, my first thoughts were to actually make a new tool post for the shaper. Um, this one takes 5 8 width tooling and most of my tool uh, high speed steel tool stock is um, half inch or 3 8 um, I could make a packing piece on the width for the 3 8 but the half inch is just not enough material so I figured I'd make a new one of those. And I've just watched... Uh, Marcus from JB from Oz and um, he's picked me to it. He's doing one for his uh, Zocco shaper and uh, that'll be interesting to sit and watch. I'll put a link in for that. So I started thinking uh, one of the things that I've run into trouble with in the past with the, um, the 14 inch shaper but previous to that the 10 inch shaper that I'd got was the amount of chatter generated when trying to cut uh, slots say so, or, or even just trying to use it as a cutoff tool now the normal approach to getting over that is you use what they call a swan neck tool so I spent some time searching the used tool market to find a swan neck tool and in an earlier episode you'll see where I found that uh, interestingly um, a bomb was gifted us one or two of these it, it's a bit of a monster I mean to put that into context there's my lantern tool, tool post <laughs> um, I haven't got facility for forging something like this so um, I can't see a way of making one in that format uh, if anybody wants that and they're prepared to pay the shipping make me an offer so I started to think about how I could make up a spring tool. A uh, quick search on Google and that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking. So you've got a tool body which sits into the tool post, a slot, circular point, that's the hinge, the spring, and then at some end this end, something this end to take the tool bit with a clamp. Um, given that all the tool bits are square, not round, I'd have to come up with some way of making a, a, either a, a blind brooch, which I don't fancy doing, or basically milling a slot and putting a plate onto clamp on it. Um, my understanding of Emma's rules is that I'm all right to use cap, purchase cap heads for uh, fixings. So that, that's option one, and uh, it, it just so happens... <sighs> I have a piece of fairly hefty steel to make it from that's a former forklift truck um, it's the vertical section of the of a tine um, plenty to go out there um, other ideas for tooling were um, just stuff that I've, I'm in need of I don't really like making stuff that I'm not going to use um, one was for a set of setup wedges for sitting in the vice so I can sit a piece in and know that it's sat with uh, 3 degrees or 7 degrees or 8 degrees 
from from perpendicular. Um, so that would be relatively straightforward. I've got some um, high yield steel I could make those from, but in terms of making a video out of it, most of it is going to be me gr uh, grinding stuff on a surface grinder, which is not a great deal of fun. And once you've made one, you've pretty much made them all the same. Um, the other one was a, a, something to help me do um, set up a DTI on the lathe so I don't have to keep messing about with the way I've been doing it. Again, there's plenty of other channels out there with examples of that. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm going to put it out there. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think I should uh, try and put together. Um, if you've got other ideas, whack them on the bottom on the comments. Um, I shall make a decision probably early part of next week. I'm currently erring towards making the spring tool. I'm going to have a think about how much use I'll get out of it. Um, I haven't got anything suitable. It would be an interesting project to make, uh, not least of which cutting that slot. That might be an interesting challenge. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'll put on some links as well on the bottom of this video to other channels I've come across over the last few weeks, um, late evening viewings, and uh, we've just passed a thousand subscribers, so we're very well chuffed, um, which means I've applied to YouTube to remonetize the videos, so at least if it, if it is paused while an advert's popped in, you can rest assured that I should be getting a fraction of a pence for it. Be nice to get some money back, wouldn't it? Cheers for now all.